Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. I'm your host, Lily Allen Duenas. Together we'll talk about the world of yoga and we'll talk to people from around the world. Before diving into the episode, I wanted to invite you to head on over to my website, wildyogatribe.com. I would really love for you to give it a look as I just launched a new website and I would love to hear what you think of it. Feel free to reach out on social media wherever makes the most sense for you. Also, if you're a longtime listener, I wanted to say thank you for your continued support. And if you feel called, I'd be honored if you left a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you tune into the show. Ready to dive in? Let's get started. Namaste, family, and welcome back to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. Today, I am so excited to welcome Philip onto the show today. He's a yoga teacher from the Czech Republic, and he and I met online, actually, but during a yoga teacher training with Yoga Vedya Gurukul in India. We were both doing a Yoga Nidra teacher training, and that's how we came into each other's orbits. But Philip is an amazing guest, amazing friend, amazing person to welcome on to the show because he specializes in burnout and he teaches yoga therapy and yoga for mental health, some psychotherapeutic trainings and sati therapy, some stress management. There's a lot of stuff I know Philip and I will talk about today that I hope you'll enjoy. So thank you so much, Philip, for being with me on the show today. Hello, Lily. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, let's dive in. And how about you share with me and our listeners how you first even heard about yoga? How did it come into your radar and into your life? This is a great question. So I don't I don't remember. <laughs> so this I don't remember which year was or, or which time was, but definitely the strongest moment what I have uh, in my mind was when I moved to Olomouc, which is like a small city, 100,000 inhabitants. And it's not uh, so far away from my, my home city. And I was working in HR department, American company Honeywell. <laughs> so, so I was, I worked there in this, in this company and I liked the city and I wanted, I desired to do some fitness activity. So I went to one of the most uh, famous, famous fitness uh, there in the city. And, and, and I remember uh, there was a yoga teacher. She was, she looked like, like which she had such a black hair and every time before uh, yoga class started she was putting some candles and this thing and the people were uh, waiting with her and she was talking to them and and I was like I was observing them and I was thinking pretty weird uh, community I decided to go to try these yoga classes and I was I fell in love so I started to go to yoga classes and I started to practice power yoga and this was for me like a first experience of yoga and I really liked it. And from fitness to type of the fitness yoga, because power yoga is more connected with fitness. So this was really great gate to start, opening gate to start some spiritual life and, and to start yoga. Awesome. Yeah, I agree that it's a good gateway, but I'm curious too how you got into the mindfulness aspect of it and how you really decided to make that transition away from the power yoga to more of that uh, mental health and wellness side of it. I, I moved to capital of Czech Republic and, and still worked in Honeywell, but in the office. And I worked there, I think, one one more year and was practicing yoga more. And I started to do also yoga teacher's training in Power Yoga in Prague. And in 2013, I went through the burnout syndrome. So this was something what was for me like one of the, the strongest experience, but really very good for transformation and for changing something in my life. When I was on sickness leave uh, and I was on sickness leave almost half a year, I was like uh, thinking at the end of the of this uh, sickness leave that I would like to change something and, and I would like to improve my yoga 
And I was like uh, turning my eyes to the sky and I said, okay, so if you want me there, can you hear me there? So if you want me to go to India, so I will uh, finish in the job and, and I will go to India. And and this was like a magic because everything was setting so uh, well that I remember it was 19th of November 2013 and I was sitting in the plane from London to Mumbai and <laughs> I didn't believe that I am I am going myself to India to do some yoga teacher training so this was like this was like a start of my spiritual journey this teacher training I I decided that I would like to really help to corporate company with this employee mental health care but I think I didn't call it in that moment like that I, I think I wanted to do just only work-life balance or some well-being activity but this came a little bit later this employee mental health care program what I started to offer and I also started to do the the psychotherapeutic training because I really wanted to help to the people who are going or who will go through the burnout syndrome. And because it's like a little bit of time of darkness, you are in the shadow and you don't know what is happening to you. And after I started to a little bit study, I, I went uh, myself to psychotherapy and we started to really define what, what is happening and what is this. And this was for me like a really very nice and good experience. Even it wasn't so nice in that moment, but now when I'm watching back, I, I think this was really like a, one of the best experience in my life. Mm, I understand what you mean about how it's not always fun <laughs> to do that hard work of being in the darkness and saying, okay, how do I find my way through or what is happening to me? It's, it's hard work. Yeah, it is. It is. So uh, the most important thing is, I think, to have the self-reflection and uh, really to be open to change something. Because even now when I'm meeting some clients, if someone is uh, is contacting me and, and thinks that, okay, I'm going to psychotherapy, so do some magic. I, I want to feel uh, good and, and I want to feel better tomorrow. Uh, so I'm saying like, uh, this will never happen because you need to change. You need to work on yourself. I'm just only guide. And the work needs to be done and everybody needs to work and open to change something in their life and to find a solution, you know. So if someone is calling me and, and want me to do some magic, I'm saying, oh, no, this is not happening. So goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. I think we all want that magic wand. We all want that. OK, I'll just or the, the magic pill, right? How many people just want to take a pill and make it all go away? Yeah, um, because we are instant. We are in instant uh, period of time. So uh, for everything is some like pills. So if you have a headache, you have a pill. But definitely, definitely to have everything immediately. And this is some, I think, dangerous of these times now that that nothing is just instant. So there needs to be made some effort to achieve some goals or to achieve some results. And results means like that someone is feeling good, what, what he or she is doing. But it takes time. So it's not just only that one day and, and next day is like that. It's, it's like sometimes I'm watching like someone is practicing yoga one month after is going to yoga teacher's training, which is done in two or three months. And, and after he or she wants to be like the best yoga teacher, but it's also the way. So it's, it's not just only then from one day to another day, I can change immediately. And what I like on yoga is that is the way for whole life. And I cannot say never that I know everything about yoga because if I say this, it means that I know absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I didn't understand nothing. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it, it does mean <laughs> that we don't understand anything if we're claiming we know everything. And I agree with you how yoga is very humbling because it is endless. It's infinite. It's the study of life is Ayurveda and yoga is the, the union of all of the aspects, all of the ways we can use our energetic body, our mental body, our spiritual body, our all the koshas, all the sheaths and layers. It's it just, you can always go deeper. There's always more to learn and to explore. And I feel like the more that I learn too about yoga, 
the more that one phrase, I'm sitting listening to a, a satsang or a teacher and just one sentence will change my whole perception on some aspect of my mind or of how I perceive time. It's, it's so powerful how it can mm -hmm. be distilled down into these really beautiful, resonant truths. Yeah, it's mm. So, Philip, what do, actually do you love about yoga? You mentioned you love as well how you'll never know everything, but what else mm -hmm. do you love about it? This self-discovering, everybody can understand yoga a different way and that everybody can find in yoga what he or she wants to find. So this is like a, that we were talking that it's infinite and yeah, so it's without borders and people can go inside and really understand. And also what I really like on yoga is that connects the the body and mind and soul. So that is, is like a, in unity, these three parts. And if someone is understanding this and not taking yoga, just only like a body exercise and, and starts to really understand that there is something deeper, this is really what I like. I think yoga is really helping to people also with the mind, because if someone is living in truth with him or herself, is watching the mirror and see who is there in the mirror without any 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 filters so it's like you are watching with your eyes on truth of yourself sometimes it's like the game of the ego when i am like thinking no it's not like that but but when i'm like really silent because silence is full of the answers so if i don't want to lie to myself really this yoga activity or even meditation is bringing me a lot of answers and i am like in in the environment or in the space which is full of truth and i'm there like with myself so this is what i really like about yoga it's it's, it's so magic and even it's not magic it's, it's so uh, easy and in the other hand is not so easy is one of the most hard thing or the hardest thing in the life to to live the present moment but it's so easy instruction and i think there are the keys of the happiness if people are living the present moment uh, so this is one of the one of the the key of the happiness I agree with you. It is. Okay. So Philip, I, I love how we talked about what you love about yoga and how silence is full of answers. I thought that was such a powerful, a powerful sentiment and perspective. And I think right now we're all filling our silence. Maybe with the pandemic, we've spent a ton mm. of time at home. Maybe we've had restrictions of even being able to go outside or go into mm restaurants or social gatherings. Now, of course, the world is opening up quite a bit more. Of course, we're on the upswing. But that silence, I think people still are filling it with music or TV mm -hmm. shows. It's that silence that I think people really want to run away from because they know that it will make them feel uncomfortable. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And even in yoga classes, you have some clients, they cannot at the end of the class, they cannot close uh, close the eyes because they feel uncomfortable. Or when we are doing some yoga nidras or some relaxations, we are creating the space of silence for them. And, and some people, they are really feeling uncomfortable with this because it's, there is some job which needs to be done and nobody... Uh, from outside cannot do it for them so it's, it's about the self-reflection sometimes i am like watching also or i met some people who are doing everything in their life just not to go to psychotherapy because uh, they have something to solve in their life and they are doing for they are going for uh, yoga classes for meditation classes for craniosacral therapy for some massages for some witch witches who gives you the advices based on some card and, and reading your future or whatever and and it's not helping and this is what i think yoga brings to the people the possibility or, or very big possibility to to be in truth 
with yourself or with myself to not to lie to me and 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 true is that that people their mind is focused really outside so not inside and outside i think the pandemic was really good opportunity to to connect with ourselves but some people they don't want to do it so i remember i had some discussion with some client and 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 we started to talk about psychotherapy and and she said no i think i don't want to go inside because i don't want to meet myself or something like that so some people are really afraid to to be or to meet themselves inside of them so it's, it's really sometimes it's really hard for the people yeah 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 it is when we avoid that self reflection Mm. And that hard work for so long when we really mm. numb it, escape from it, run from it for years. It feels if they finally look inside and meet themselves, it will just be, I don't know, like it just completely a flood of overwhelm mm. because it's just years and years of, of layers and piles and all of the stuff, all of the narratives and the stories. Mm. It's just mm. it's so hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if I have magic power and I have one wish, what I would like to, what I would like to wish uh, for all the world, I would like to wish that people are people love themselves. Really, they they have the self love because I think also is uh, one of the the strongest topic in therapy that people they don't like themselves. Even some of them they even don't know that they don't like themselves. So they don't love themselves, not like, but they don't love themselves. Wow, I am so glad you shared that. And I think a lot of people will need to hear that and need to ponder that a little. But for me, Philip, when I'm in a meditation retreat, I'm usually reflecting most on self-compassion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I really love myself. I, I'm all right with myself. I, we do okay, but it's the <laughs> yeah, it's okay. But it's the compassion side that that gentle, soft, allowing mm -hmm. and accepting when I make mistakes or when I feel like I'm failing or I didn't do something quite how I wanted to, to that mm -hmm. level. I, I know I could have done better. I know I could have said that better. I know I could have learned something to handle it with a better grace. It's that compassion element that for me, at least, just feels so, so difficult. Something I'm always working mm. on. How about you? What advice do you have for that? Or what's your two cents? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, I think this is also one of the key. So uh, one of the key to happiness, to be happy, really to have the self-compassion. So because what is done and uh, to be like uh, in the situation in the past and still blame myself, what I did wrong or what, what I should do differently, I will not change it. Uh, I don't have the machine for going back in the time so this is this is how it is the time is flowing we are doing the mistakes and i think really nothing is mistake i think nothing is bad experience so even our mistakes can push us or move us forward uh, in our life and we if we take a lesson from it and we are forgiving our, our ourselves and, and really we have compassion with ourselves because what is done so it doesn't need to be the punishment or the blaming and a lot of people they don't have the compassion with themselves they were raised or educated that they cannot do the mistakes and once they are doing the mistakes so their world is immediately destroyed because they did the mistakes everybody is doing mistakes we are not perfect and i'm so happy that we are not perfect so because we can really learn from every situation and learn for the future life. My advice is like uh, to, to accept the reality. So to observe it really from outside what, what, what I did and, and don't blame uh, myself or don't punish myself and just only what is done. So we cannot change it, but we can get the lesson from the situation. Yeah. Thank you. The punishment and the blaming is where a lot of suffering comes from. And I agree that it's about, okay, that happened. Like just choose again, begin again. You get another chance yes. <laughs> every day, every hour, you get another opportunity to try and to, or just to choose. Mm -hmm. And so I think instead of focusing, as you said, on that back pass and just constantly reliving it and beating ourselves up about it and questioning it, it's yeah. just saying, okay, I see it. You're right. You said it, observe reality 
observe that and then say, okay, now's the ch- time to choose again. Yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the mindfulness is helping also because if you are on the same situation or similar situation and you are doing again let's say you want to do again the same mistake and if you have really good level of self-reflection something inside of you is telling you like uh, hey hey you are already you were already in this situation and i think you are not going well uh, doing well so it's, there is some uh, little red lights inside which are saying to our mind hey we were already here so let's Let's start to do something different way this or let's solve this situation a little bit different way. So I think this yoga and mindfulness is also so helping to us to get the self-reflection and to really recognize when the situation is happening again. But some people they are on the same situation and as you said so again and again and we can start again and then so when i was in vipassana meditation retreat this was like a start again was uh, saying this uh, teacher in the record this is like also like we can start again and we can do it different way if we know the, the situation brought us some things which we didn't like or on ourselves or was a little bit of mess so this is this is great opportunity So every new situation is great opportunity to do it different way. Yes. Mm. I'm so glad we're talking about this, Philip. Thank yeah. you. And I've also done an SN Goenka Vipassana yeah. before. I've done a few other Vipassanas, like in a Mahasi method, but you yeah, Mahasi, Goenka. Yeah, no, yes, I did do both of them. Oh, you look yeah. at us. We're little twins. <laughs> I would love to talk to you a little bit about your experience with your Vipassana. Did you do it in the Czech Republic, somewhere else? And what was some of the biggest kind of things you took away from that experience? The first Vipassana I uh, did was in Czech Republic in summertime 2016 and because I was doing this psychotherapeutic training of sati therapy which sati means the mindfulness or mindful or mindfulness so it's it was one of the condition to finish the training to participate on vipassana but anyway I was learning about that and again when I'm going back in the time so I was working in corporate company in in IT company and my friend my my colleague she said oh, i want to do vipassana and i was asking her and what is this and she said so this is like a, some meditation retreat you are you are sitting 10 days so you are meditating 10 hours per day and it's so good and so refreshing and my first reaction was never i will never do it and in two years i was sitting already in vipassana so it's like uh, sometimes these people are um, thinking something and it's, it's different. So I did it in Czech Republic. It was really great and beautiful experience because we were in the mountain in some really old hotel with uh, old facilities. This was so beautiful for me because really we were uh, meditating, I think it was 10 hours per day. At the beginning it was a little bit difficult because when we are like uh, managing our breath in yoga, so the instruction was like, uh, don't manage your breath and don't verbalize nothing. Like is in this tradition of Mahasi Saido when you need to verbalize everything what you are doing. So this was a little bit difficult at the beginning for me, maybe two days and after it went really well and I was so happy even during these main hours I was sitting and I didn't move myself during whole hour and, and I tried to really to stay in the position without any movement and it was really great also with the breath and I remember I think it was the ninth day of this and I was like doing the instruction and in some moment I stopped to do I stopped to do the instruction and, and I was connected with, or I, I connect myself with myself. So this was, I, I don't know how to describe it, but I was in some like a space where was not the time. I felt really with full sense that, that the sentence I am has the full sense I don't know if it is understandable, but I was like a touching my being and was some like a moment when I was like a 
totally in in this meditation time it didn't take so much time but still when i'm talking about this i feel like i feel cold on my skin because this was such a strong moment the time and really i felt the present moment fully and and i felt my being fully so this was my experience with vipassana and i remember the last day when we could talk i was laughing and and i felt so much pain in my cheeks and in my face muscles because Because 10 days you are not talking, you are not watching. So everything is released. And after 10 days, uh, you start to use again your face muscles. But was some euphoria. I remember with my colleagues, we felt some euphoria that we did it, that we did it really. We stayed, we didn't escape from the from Vipassana. It was some like a beautiful experience. And this second Vipassana I did in Thailand, in Chiang Mai, there is such a big monastery and big meditation center and really had this experience with this, uh, this Mahasi Sayado tradition, which was really also beautiful with the changing of walking and sitting meditation was really so nice experience as well. Yeah, it was. I also did the Goenka first and the Mahasi mm-hmm. second. And so for me, it was such a gift yeah. to be able able to move. I really felt this enormous sense of gratitude mm. for not having just to sit in that cross-legged position for 10 hours mm. a day to get. Yes. And with Mahasi, I think we did about 12 hours of meditation total, but just having the, the walking in there was like, yeah, yeah, this was oh, great. thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I remember this, we had also the chanting at six o'clock in the evening. In the morning, I think we had also some chanting and in the evening we had some chanting and it was really great. I, I really liked it. All of us, we needed to have the white cloth and, and it was so beautiful. So I, I really liked it. And this was so magical, this monastery there. So I'm every time I'm like a thinking if I want to escape from the reality to go inside myself. So I'm like a thinking I'm checking the flight tickets that sometimes I could go there just only for one week or something like that. Because you can do in this meditation center, you can do 21 days or you can do just only one week or you can really ask for special days that is not like going cut. This is like a 10 days, but it's strictly done like that. But in this center, you can organize or manage your days if you have just only five days or more days. So it's up to you. Yeah. And I actually will say, I don't think that when you do Vipassana, you're escaping reality. I think you're maybe escaping your everyday life and the routine of life, but you're definitely going into true reality is your mind. Like that's the realest of real life. (laughs) That's true. That's true. That's true. Oh, so I always ask my guests on the show, Philip, what is your personal definition of yoga? So for me, uh, yoga is the way it's like a lifestyle, but also the way of the whole life and is the gateway to go inside uh, of myself and to understand a little bit of me. And to get some answers, which for the questions, so what will be after when we will pass away or what is what is about the religions? So because you can hear that our religion is really the truth. And at the end of the day, when I was in India, I really understood that it doesn't matter if you are believing, if you are believing in Jesus or Vishnu, Shiva or Allah. So I think there is one source and for me I really understood this thing that is is really coming from one source and, and is the same source and doesn't matter how we are calling this god so for me is this brought me yoga this is the gateway to the sp- spiritual life it, it it doesn't mean that people if they are saying that they are spiritual that they need to believe in some god or in some gods but they can be spiritual even they are going inside of themselves so i think yoga for me is really the gateway to connect with my spirituality so this is and this is such a fortune so this is a treasure it's treasure yeah it is it's a true it's it's richness, right? It is yeah. the richness of life and of experiencing it to the full, vast potential of it. It's not mm. sleepwalking through life. It's not escaping life mm. and ourselves and our own being and body. It's 
it that is the treasure. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And even I'm like watching the people around me, and and I was thinking when I uh, studied this psychotherapy, and I was thinking like, oh my god, in 19th or 20th century, when when this psychology and and psychotherapy was just beginning in the beginning, and I was thinking like how they were defining the mental illnesses or this uncomfortable situation in the lives and these things, and now everything is so accessible and doesn't matter because the mind of the people is still same. People will be afraid from the future. People will have some trauma from the past. So the accessible is the service, but if the people, they don't want to do something with that, so they will never move forward. They will never move forward. So it doesn't matter if we are in 20th centuries or 21st century. It doesn't matter because these services or even yoga classes is all around and everybody is the, the the fruits is all around and the people if they want they can just only pick it and they can eat the fruits but if they want to eat it and this is for me also a little bit magical that that we have the opportunity we have the possibilities and it's just only uh, up to us if we will take the advantage of the accessibility of yoga of the spiritual life around us yeah And Philip, I also would love to ask you a little bit about the Czech Republic. Could you tell our listeners more about what yoga is like in the Czech Republic? Is it super popular? Is it everywhere? Is it mm. only athletic-based yoga? We are a small country in the center of Europe. We have about, I, I think, 11 millions of inhabitants. But based on the yoga life, I think you can find... Uh, all different kind of yoga here as well this like a fitness style as well as like a meditation yoga a kundalini yoga really all the kinds of vinyasa even this bikram yoga is here but really this is like a colorful like everywhere else what i can say that 2019 i think yoga was really everywhere Definitely in Prague, in capital. And thanks to this COVID pandemic, a uh, lot of studios were closed. A uh, lot of people, they started to, started to work again in the jobs because this yoga business was, or yoga classes were not allowed and were a lot of restrictions. So I think that now the environment is more clean because I can say that, that yoga was everywhere. And, and sometimes the quality of yoga It's like everywhere. There is like a low quality of yoga classes. There are some high quality of the classes. What I can say is that everybody can find the style which is convenient. So everybody can find the, their own way. So I think all the classes, all the kind of the classes are, are possible to find in Czech Republic. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing with us more about it. And what do you love about the Czech Republic or about your country? I, I received some questions a few years ago if I can choose another country when I would like to uh, be born. I was thinking, I don't know, because I love my country so much because we have everything here. We have wine yards, uh, the mountains. Uh, we have so much beautiful mountains, the lakes, uh, whatever. So you can find everything in Czech Republic. And what I really like that we have really four seasons, really springtime, uh, summertime, autumn and, and, and the wintertime. I'm living in the countryside, my garden. So I'm growing my uh, vegetables and fruits. So this is such a blessing that I can be connected with the with this mother earth and really to take care of some land we have so much castles the ruins of the castles the hills really so beautiful so I, I like and, and also beautiful cities if some listeners would like to come to Prague it's one of the most romantic city in Europe and it's not so big it's not, if you are going to Paris it's such a big agglomeration so it's such a big capital Prague is not so big but it's so beautiful as well You will be very welcomed in, in Czech Republic if you would like to come. Yeah, I have actually been to Prague myself yeah. a few years ago, and I agree it was so romantic, so mm. fairy tale. Like <laughs> everything you're walking around, I felt like I was in a Disney movie, like not a Disney movie, but in a way, but yeah, because it's so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. But 
Philip, I want to just say thank you so much for joining me on this podcast and having this beautiful conversation with me. I'm so happy we did this. Yeah, me also. It was so beautiful to have. I was a little bit afraid because of my English, but I think it went well. (laughs) Yes, it did. I promise you did great. (laughs) So thank you again, Philip, for being with me. It's just been a joy to be with you. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. From time machines to magic wands and wishes from genies, my conversation with Philip Kleshtik was beyond delightful, as it was equally actually filled with powerful insight. I hope that this conversation made you crave silence and self-reflection. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Wild Yoga Tribe podcast. Be well. Thank you for the gift of your attention today. If you feel called, please share this episode with someone who you think could benefit from it. Leaving a review would also be so appreciated. I also hope you can join me online on my website, wildyogatribe.com or on social media. I would love to get to know you better. I would love to share with you and to hear your thoughts. Send me a DM, send me a note, get in touch. It would be great to hear from you. And as always, be well, dear one, be well.